Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. I am back. We got a new fresh chalk talk in session here. Today's video is gonna be on how to address gallbladder attacks. We're gonna look at how we diagnose, assess, and get to the root cause using functional medicine and not just treat the symptoms. All right, so let's dive in. Before we do, click the subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell as well so you get notifications. And also down below, there'll be a link where you can sign up to the newsletter where we get spoon feed all these great information to you weekly. All right, so let's dive in. What's the gallbladder? It sits here on the right side underneath the um, the ribs here, right underneath the gallbladder, right underneath the, the liver, excuse me. And that gallbladder is designed to it, it concentrate bile salts. And that bile is designed to help emulsify and break down fat. Really important, fat soluble vitamins are vitamin A, D, E, and K. We need healthy gallbladder function to emulsify it or break it down. Now, emulsification, you've seen it when you wash your greasy dishes, that Dawn dish soap, when it hits that fat and it kind of breaks it down, that's emulsification. And your gallbladder is essentially doing that with bile inside of your small intestine. It helps break down that fat so we can absorb it, assimilate it, and utilize it. So first off, gallbladder, we already talked about digestive physiology 101. So when we eat food, we chew it up. It's got protein and fat in there. Number one, we're gonna have hydrochloric acid produced in the stomach, that's gonna bring the pH down. It's gonna make it more acidic. That then food mixed up with that HCL will get released into the small intestine, that's called chyme. That acidic chyme will trigger our pancreas to make bicarbonate to bring that pH back up. It's also gonna trigger a hormone called cholecystic kinin, CCK. And that's gonna stimulate that gallbladder here to contract. That gallbladder here, CCK hits it, it contracts, and that bile comes out here via the common hepatic bile duct into the small intestine, hits the fat, emulsification happens. You also have the pancreas here, it makes a whole bunch of pancreatic lipase and protease, which are fat and protein digesting enzymes, which help break down fat and protein. So we have all these things happening in this digestive cascade. And if we don't have enough acidity, it's possible that we won't get the adequate trigger of the bile or the release of enzymes from the pancreas. So really important, we need good HCL, good enzymes, and good bile production and stimulation to have our digestion work properly. Now on the lab testing, if there's a gallbladder issue, gallbladder pain, you're gonna feel that pain in this area. You may feel it in the shoulder blades too. That's a common viscerosomatic reflux. Viscero organ, somatic muscle. So that organ so refluxes to that muscle on the shoulder. You see it with the appendix in the right hip. You see it with the ovaries and the back pain. You see it with the heart and the left jaw and the arm pain. So blood work, we may see elevated liver enzymes, ALT, AST. We may see gallbladder, GGT going up. We may see elevated bilirubin, which is a breakdown product of red blood cells that go to the liver and gallbladder, LDH, amylase, ALP, alkaline phosphatase, and increased WBCs if there's an infection, right? These are all immune markers or enzyme markers for the gallbladder, the pancreas, and or the liver. Ultrasound, we may see, do an ultrasound, which is um, basically sound waves to get a visualization of what's happening. We may see inflammation. We may also see stones and stagnation in there. And obviously a physical exam. It's common, to, it's called Murphy sign, where they'll go in there and they'll, they'll feel that. And if it's tender, breathe in, breathe out, and they'll get right underneath there. And if it's painful and tender, that's Murphy sign. All right, root causes. So what could be the root cause of how and why the gallbladder has inflammation and pain? So number one, it could be certain food allergies. Dr. Jonathan Wright has a great article on it. The big foods are gonna be bacon, coffee, and eggs. From a paleo template, if you're eating paleo and you have these food problems, it could be that. There's other things such as um, onions, cauliflower, um, citrus foods can be big issues too. So it was a big list that we'll put a link to the article down below where you can access the longer list. I did a few videos on this a year or so ago where you can reference. Uh, gluten and refined sugar and junky sugar. Low fat diets also can cause gallbladder issues. Why? Because here's our gallbladder. Imagine it's got a little stone in it, right? So here's our gallbladder. It contracts, that bile comes out of the common hepatic bile duct, right? The liver has the right and left lobe which releases bile into the gallbladder. The benefit of the gallbladder, it increases the concentration of bile salts over 10X. It's gonna then release down this cystic duct into the common hepatic bile duct here, and then it goes into the small intestine, the hepatopancreatic ampular is where it goes, or the sphincter of OD for short, and then we have the enzymes come out this way, and if we have a stone sitting right there, that can cause the enzymes to back up into the pancreas and cause a pancreatitis. That's why pancreas can get inflamed from a gallbladder issue lodging down 
beneath where these things join here, where this highway joins. So that kind of just gives you the physiology. Now in general, gluten refined sugar, if we don't have enough fat, if we're eating a low fat diet, what can happen is we miss the stimulation, we miss that CCK stimulation so that bile sits there and it can start to esterify and crystallize and stones can form. And then one day you eat some fat, it's like hugging a big porcupine and that can inflame that gallbladder because it's now contracting over a really sharp stone versus you know, smooth liquid bile salts. So that's the difference. Um, low HCL levels are a big trigger as well. Not enough acidity, not enough fat. That can be a big trigger as well. Antibiotics can disrupt gut dysbiosis. Also, poor gallbladder function can feed back and cause dysbiosis because bile salts are antibacterial. So if we don't have enough bile salts being released every day, that's kind of our natural disinfectant in the small intestine, so it makes it more prone for bacteria to grow and can create SIBO with having poor bile secretion and function. Also, hormone imbalances. Hormones like estrogen can also make the bile more sluggish and viscous and like molasses, so it can decrease that flow. And then if you add in things like, well, so essentially birth control pills and you have estrogen dominance from low progesterone in relation to, to estrogen, that can start to cause the sludginess of the bile and you add in some antibiotics in there and it can really start to mess up that gallbladder function. Now things that we'll do in functional medicine world, we'll make diet changes. We'll test the gut and address SIBO or other bacterial infections. Giardia is also an infection that's known to affect and live in the gallbladder. We'll use things like milk thistle, dandelion, fringe tree, artichoke, phosphatidylcholine, beetroot. I have a product called Liver Supreme that has some of these things in there. We'll use HCL. We'll use proteolytic and lipolytic enzymes. We'll use things like that to help and support the digestive system and to help digest fat as well. And if we're a female, we're gonna look at the hormones. If there's estrogen dominance, we're gonna fix it. If, we're, if we have cortisol and stress issues, we're gonna deal with that as well. We're gonna fix the gut and make sure you're also infection free. Wanna get to the root cause. So hope this helped. If you enjoyed the video, click the subscribe in the bell below. Make sure you subscribe to the videos. And if you wanna dive in deeper, if you have a, a gallbladder or a hormone issue and a gut issue, you wanna dive in deeper, Feel free to click below and schedule a consult with myself or colleagues, and I look forward to helping you out and we'll have more content coming your way. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. Bye.